So before I get too far into this video, I want to let you know that I am actually cat sitting for a friend right now. So I'm at her house and her lighting isn't the best. I couldn't really find like a good spot in front of a window to film and her lighting is like a little bit yellow. So I apologize. So today I have another concert experience video for you guys. I went to Disrupt Festival and it was amazing. It was really, really fun. And so I want to talk about it. One of the things I'm going to be talking about is how Disrupt and Warp Tour are similar in some ways and how in other ways they're different. If at any point during this video, if I'm wrong, like my numbers are wrong or something I say isn't exactly true, let me know in the comments. I really tried my best to do my research. So right here I have my laptop and we're gonna be looking at some pictures that I took of Ticketmaster because I took pictures of like the ticket prices and I took some pictures of reviews that I wanted to read to you guys and other things like that. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the dates. So this year was the very first year of Disrupt and for their first year of being a tour, I think they did really, really well. So Disrupt 2019 had 25 shows and they're going to 21 different states. They do have some repeat shows. They had three in Texas, two in Florida, and two in California. So I did some research for 2018 Warp Tour. Uh, Warp Tour in 2018 had around 37 dates, but they had multiple dates in the same states. They had two dates in Ohio, two in New Jersey, three in Florida, three in Texas, and four in California. So although last year's Warped had more dates and more shows, they stayed in the same states for multiple days. Now let's talk about pricing. So what I noticed about pricing for this tour is that it's all over the place. So for Warp Tour, it was always around $45 to $50 plus fees, I believe, which isn't bad at all. But then Disrupt's prices were very different based on where the show was and when it was. When I looked at my date, the lawn seats were around $20 and the pit tickets were almost 30, I believe, like the day before the show happened. $30 for pit tickets is really good. Now, I don't know if they were $30 like the whole time or just a couple of days before the show. So as I looked at other dates coming up, the prices were about the same as mine, but some dates stood out. Most of the shows coming up appear to be between $29 and $45, pretty decent. But as I went down, you can see the tickets for Irving, California were the most expensive and the pit was sold out. Albuquerque, Phoenix, and Chula Vista prices were all pretty much the same as each other. But other locations were kind of pricey, specifically Irvine, California, and Auburn, Washington. I didn't get a chance to look at any other past prices, so if you went to Disrupt, how much did you pay? Now time for my favorite topic, merch. I'm absolutely in love with the merch that I got. So I got this Disrupt tee. It's like black tie-dye and has the skull on it. And then on the back, it has all of the Disrupt dates and all the bands. And I believe I paid around $30 for this, which isn't bad. And then for this Andy shirt that I'm wearing, I think I paid about 25. They had some merch booths and tents around that were selling bracelets, bags, sunglasses, and other things that you would find at Warp Tour. Me and my friend got these matching sunglasses and on the sides they say mosh it up and shut up and mosh. I think these cost around 10 to $15. Me and my friend also got these matching tank tops that have emo, punk, like Disney princesses on them. They have like tattoos and everything. So she got Belle and I got Tinkerbell and I'm really, really happy with them. And I think each tank top was about 25. I think it's safe to say I'm pretty happy with the merch that I got. All right, now let's talk about meeting bands. So we all know that Warp Tour was really good at free meet and greets and signings, right? Disrupt tried to do the same thing and I was pretty pleased with it. It seemed like most of the bands there had a signing as they called it, but I only went to Andy's. It's weird though, because whenever I think of a signing, I think of them like sitting behind a table and you, them just like signing a piece of paper or a shirt and you saying hi and then leaving. But at mine, it was different. They actually allowed us to walk around the table, shake Andy's hand and get a picture with him. So that was a very pleasant surprise, especially since I met Andy at Warp Tour in 2017. I was very excited to meet him again. Although they wanted everyone in line seeing Andy to have a poster for him to sign, as I said in my Disrupt vlog, they ran out of posters. So since they sold out on posters, I didn't get anything signed. I only got a picture, but I'm definitely not complaining. I do think that next time, if they want everyone to have a poster for the signing, they need to make sure that they have enough posters and that they don't sell out. Luckily, they still let everyone meet Andy and get a picture with him, regardless if they had anything for him to sign or not. I really hope that in the future they continue that and they don't like set a limit for how many people can get in line for the meet and greet. I did interview some people at Disrupt, so I wanna show you those clips. Montana, how do you feel about Disrupt? Love it. It's pretty cool, good? 
How do you feel like compared to Warp Tour? Um, I say this is going to be pretty successful like Warp Tour. And if Warp Tour doesn't keep doing like little like tours around the country, I feel like this could be like a... The new like cross country like type of thing for us yeah. to go to. Yeah. It's pretty similar to Warp Tour but there's definitely differences and there are ways you can get better. Try. Let's go ahead and read some Ticketmaster reviews. Since the weather wasn't supposed to be nice, not as many people showed up as expected. However, the bands played very well and I enjoyed the second stage a lot more than the main stage. All of the vendors that participated reminded me of Warp Tour, which made it all that much more special. It was perfect and amazing, so glad the show went very well and can't wait to attend again next year if they have it. So we had been worried about this concert all week because storms were supposed to hit. We for sure thought it was going to be canceled until the day of the concert we got alerted that all the bands will be on the main stage. We then got to stand in front of the main stage in the pit, which is normally a multi-hundred dollar spot. The bands kicked ass and knew how to entertain, and for being as close as we were, the sound was amazing. We had a great time rocking out in the rain at Rockstar Disrupt Festival. Great bands, met new people, and enjoyed all the bands on the tour. So it looks like it rained a lot in St. Louis, but everyone still had a great time. This review is from my date. They said, the festival was fun and well planned out. I think it has a bright future if they keep this up. I liked that set times didn't seem to be as much of an issue as other festivals. That's true. Something about Warp Tour is they have like five or six or seven, you know, stages all scattered about. And there's always a band playing at every single one, like all the time. 
And so you always had to choose what band you wanted to listen to and you always ended up having to miss like a band that you really wanted to see because you wanted to go see the other one. So that was actually a really good thing about Disrupt is they only had two stages. They had the festival stage that had a warp Tour feel and then they had the main stage. Each band had their turn playing at the festival stage first and then they went over to the main stage and the bigger bands played. Had a really great time rocking out to the bands at this year's lineup. Having it sponsored by Rockstar made it even better because you got to try new flavors. That's true, they were giving away free Rockstar and it was great. I'm hoping they bring this back as an annual show because I think it would be a great replacement for Warp Tour. See, everybody is thinking the kind of the same thing, like it could replace Warp Tour for us. This one's a long one and it's very judgy. There were so many issues with the way this was run. They only had one band going at a time and the schedule was not posted anywhere at the venue. So if you wanted to see Sum 41 who was on at 10 p.m. and another band who was on at 3 p.m., you had to either sit around and wait for seven hours or watch a band you really weren't interested in. There were not a lot of options to see bands. That was always the fun of Warp Tour though, to see new bands that you haven't seen before and discover new bands that you like. At 5 p.m., the bands moved to the covered stage, and that's when the issues started. If you realized that you had the wrong row and had to enter the walkway to go to a row over, they would not let you. Then when you tried to leave your row, the usher stopped you and really did not want to let you pass. And each time you tried to leave slash enter a row or the covered area, you had to show your ticket. That just seems weird because that didn't happen at my show at all. At my show, it was completely different. Me and my friend had lawn seats and we ended up not even sitting in the lawn. They had the lawn closed off so people that had lawn seats were still sitting like in the seated covered area that other people had bought seats for. I'm guessing they did that because they didn't sell as many tickets as they thought they would so there were a lot of seats just open. Alright, here's another long one. Going to Warp Tour at any given opportunity I could was my summer concert tour. When it was announced that they would no longer be doing a cross country tour, I was very sad. There will never be anything like the Warp Tour experience. When this tour got announced, my friend and I were back and forth on whether to go or not. I had to convince him to tag along. I was more sold on the main stage acts because I grew up listening to Sum 41 and Atreyu and had never seen the used and thrice, who I had just begun to listen to more. I had expectations that this tour may replace Warp Tour and maybe even have the same vibe. When we arrived at the venue, I was surprised that the lot was hardly close to being full. It was past when the doors had opened and I think we got there around 2.15 p.m. I knew it was a Friday, however, if this was a Warped Tour show or Mayhem Fest, I knew that it would have drawn more. Still skeptical, we walked in to find out where everything was, and to get ready for our first band, we wanted to see Memphis Mayfire. The band put on an amazing set, I loved it, I heard a great mix of old and new, we also watched Four Years Strong and I really dug them. When the bands we wanted to watch finished, we walked around checking things out. I found myself bored. There was not a lot to entertain yourself if you didn't want to watch the following acts until the main stage. I keep comparing this to a huge festival like Warped or Mayhem, and I know it's not. However, at these type of events, I always felt like there was a lot to do. The other fests have more vendors, record label tents, and more meet and greets, better merch selections, and you could roam around for hours just looking at stuff for sale and maybe even find a stage with a local band playing. This was not like that at all. When we finally got to go to the main stage, our lawn seats had been upgraded free to the 200 section of the amphitheater because of the terrible ticket sales. See, that happened at mine too. Main stage acts killed it. I love that the bands wanted to play their old music for those fans who had followed them for years and mixed in a few new songs for their younger crowd. Sum 41 was my favorite by far because their set list was perfect and sound quality was great. I loved the bands that I wanted to see and the music selection they chose to play. I was disappointed by the lack of entertainment that I thought a festival would bring if you were not there to see everyone. I expected a better turnout with people, but being on a Friday, I know sometimes that's tough. I wish the merch was around 20 to 25 for a shirt for a festival shirt, especially for one just starting out. I didn't want to pay over 30 and the designs were not worth it. I also wish there were more vendors and label reps to find new music and be able to learn about new things there. There was not really a presence of this. If this tour came around again, it would depend on the lineup if I would go again. I was sold on a Trey U the Used thrice in Sum 41 because I missed Sum 41 playing Chicago back in May because it was sold out. This is what drew me going to this because I love them. This person gave a one star review and said rip off. While the bands were great, I think it's ridiculous that the lawn was closed so that people who paid 12 bucks for their tickets had the same seats as me. I paid double what other people did and they were sitting around me. Loved it, felt young again, like back when Warp Tour was a big thing in my days. 
Had the best flipping time at this show. These bands brought me back to some good times. All this needs to happen again. So we obviously can't ignore the similarities between Warp Tour and Disrupt. They both have bands and artists such as Sum 41, Sleeping With Sirens, The Used, Andy Black from Black Bell Brides, Memphis Mayfire, and many more. But they also have major differences in issues such as pricing, set times, and vendors, as we read from the reviews. So now I have to ask, what's your opinion? Are you okay with Disrupt being the new IT tour, or are you still mourning over Warp Tour? Let me know in the comments. I think I'm definitely okay with Disrupt replacing Warp Tour every year. I mean, obviously I'm always gonna love Warp Tour. It was literally perfect in every way possible. I literally never had any complaints about Warp Tour ever, but I don't have any complaints about Disrupt really either. I'm pretty easy to please, and I thought Disrupt was a lot of fun. Obviously, if they do it again next year, which they really should, I hope they make some changes, and I know that after a couple years, they'll get better. I mean, obviously, not every tour can be perfect their first year. I'm sure when Warp Tour was starting out, they had some issues too. And I think that's just about everything I have to say in this video. If you went to Disrupt, please comment down below and tell me what date you went to, what bands you saw, and if you had fun. And if you miss Warp Tour, that's okay, because I do too. Of course, no tour can replace Warp Tour. Warp Tour was unique and fun and perfect, and it was something that we all definitely looked forward to every summer. But I definitely think that Disrupt has the ability and the potential to be something that we all can look forward to every summer. Alright guys, I think that's about it. I will see you all in my next video. Bye!